The last chip that we have to build in, uh, in this week is called uh, Counter. And before we set out to describe the counter, I'd like to say a few words about the context in which counters come to play. So let us assume that I have a domestic uh, robot in my home, and I want to uh, cause this robot to uh, bake some uh, brownies uh, for me. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a very specific program consisting of something like 50 instructions that tell the robot exactly how to bake these uh, brownies. And I'm going to uh, mount this uh, recipe uh, on the kitchen wall. And next to the recipe, I'm going to put a counter that emits a number that tells the robot which instruction uh, the robot has to execute next. So it will begin with the uh, number zero because my instructions are numbered from zero to 49. And the contract is going to be as follows. When the robot carries out uh, a certain instruction, at the end of this uh, cycle, if you will, the counter increments by one, and then the robot takes a look at the counter and, and, uh, and the robot sees that uh, it has to uh, execute uh, uh, instruction number one, it executes instruction number one, counter becomes two, executes instruction number two, and so on. Now, in addition to this basic increment, I also want to be uh, in full control of the situation, so I also want to be able to come in and change the counter to a specific number, like 17. Irrespective of what the counter shows now, three, four, five, whatever it is, I want to come in and, and put the number 17 instead, and then have the, the counter continue to count from 17 onward. Now, this is very important because, um, you know, suppose that the robot finished uh, uh, baking uh, the brownies, and I want to now bake another set of brownies. Well, in order to do this, I can go to the counter and put the number zero in it, and this will cause uh, the robot to start from the beginning. Now, another reason why we want to uh, set the counter to some, uh, uh, to some other values is because, uh, you know, when, when the robot starts to, to bake the second batch of brownies, the oven is already warm. So we have to skip a whole set of instructions that tell the robot how to turn on the oven. So the first instruction in the program uh, will, probably be, will probably be something like, if the oven is working, go to instruction 11. Or some, you know, skip all the instructions that, uh, that deal with turning on the oven. That's another reason why, why we want to be able to set the counter to a particular value. So uh, we see that basically we have to support three uh, generic or uh, primitive uh, operations, which are as follows. Fetch the first instruction. In order to, to do this, we want to set the program counter to zero. Uh, the other operation, which is kind of uh, uh, the default operation, is fetch the next instruction. And in order to do this, we have to be able to increment the current state of the counter by one. And finally, we want to be able to go to a particular uh, instruction, fetch and execute it. And in order to do this, we have to be able to set the program counter to, uh, to some uh, uh, desired value. So what is a counter? A counter is a chip, a hardware device, that somehow realizes this obstruction, that somehow supports these three uh, primitive operations. So let's talk about this obstruction in more detail. And I'm going to use uh, the same chip uh, diagrams that we used uh, uh, earlier in, in other units in this, uh, uh, in this course. So we have a black box uh, uh, description of a program counter. We, uh, we see that uh, uh, we have a 16-bit input coming in containing a, sec a certain 16-bit value. We have a 16-bit uh, output uh, going out. And we also have three control bits, which are called load, ink, and reset. You know, ink stands for increment. Now, how does this thing is supposed to, to work? Well, here's a more formal description of the uh, desired operation of this 16-bit uh, counter. If the reset bit equals 1, if the reset bit is asserted, well, in that case, I want the counter to emit 0. So in the next cycle, uh, uh, the counter will emit the number 0. If the load bit is asserted, well, in that case, I want to set the counter to a particular value. So, you know, if I want uh, uh, the counter to, uh, uh, to go to uh, uh, number 17, well, I put the number 17, or in binary, you know, I, I put a 16-bit value uh, 
uh, that represents 17 in the in input, and I assert the load bit. You know, this will bypass the regular increment of, of the counter, and it will set the counter to the number 17 in the next cycle. And if inc uh, equals 1, if, if the inc bit is asserted, well, in that case, the output of the counter will be the current state of the counter plus 1. This is the default operation of the counter. And finally, if none of these control bits uh, is asserted, the counter does nothing. It emits uh, its current state. So this is the uh, uh, desired uh, functionality of the counter. And your job is to write the necessary uh, HDL statements that will actually uh, realize this desired functionality. Now, if you don't see how to do it, uh, don't worry about it, because we're going to have a complete uh, unit uh, dedicated to uh, uh, Project 3. And in this unit, we're going to talk about various uh, tips and guidelines on how to build every chip, including uh, this counter chip. Now, before we go on to talk about this unit, I'd like to give you an example of how the counter chip actually operates uh, using our hardware simulator. So this is what we're going to do next. To get started, we uh, load the program counter built-in chip. So um, we go to the uh, Tools folder, and we look for built-in chips. And inside the built-in chip, built chips, we uh, search uh, the program counter.hdl file. Here it is. This is a built-in chip, and uh, we see that um, it has a GUI side effect that shows the contents of the program counter, which is essentially a register with some control bits. And indeed, we see that it has uh, a 16-bit input, a 16-bit output, and three control bits named load, ink, and reset. So let us uh, load some value into the program counter. So we want to put in the number uh, 23. We have to run the clock in order to commit this value. But uh, we see that um, actually nothing happens. We are running the clock. Nothing seems to happen. And nothing seems to happen because we forgot to assert the load bit. So let us assert the load bit and run the clock. And indeed, we see that the program counter now contains 23 but it doesn't really count anything, does it? It uh, seems to be fixed on 23. Well, it's fixed because we forgot to assert the ink uh, load bit. So let us do that. We assert uh, the ink uh, load bit. And uh, still, nothing seems to, uh, to happen. Well, nothing seems to happen because in every cycle, we do two things. We tell the... Uh, uh, the, the register, the program counter to increment, but we also load it with 23 in every cycle. So it, it stays at 23. So if you want uh, the program counter to finally uh, uh, count anything, we have to turn off the load bit, run the clock, and finally it looks like we are cooking with gas. The program counter uh, advances in every cycle by one, and this is the classical operation of a program counter. In fact, we can uh, we can click the uh, fast forward icon, and this will uh, do sort of an infinite loop that uh, runs the clock forward. And we see that indeed in every cycle, uh, the program counter advances by one. Very nice. Let's stop the clock. And uh, let us uh, reset the program counter. So we set the reset bit to 1, and we hope that the program counter will turn to 0. And uh, let's run the clock. And indeed, we see that in the next cycle, the program, cycle, the program counter is 0. Well, it doesn't count again, because, um, uh, because reset is still 1. So we have to turn off the reset bit and uh, run the clock. And we see that uh, now, indeed, the program counter progresses nicely in every cycle. So this has been a demo of the program counter. And let's go back to the lecture. So this is the end of the uh, uh, unit that uh, describes uh, 
how to build a counter. And actually, this is the end of uh, uh, the description of all the chips that we are going to build uh, this week. And in the next unit, we are going to give you all sorts of uh, tips and guidelines on how to build these chips and how to submit Project 3.